Okay. All right. Lecture 12, um, estimating population proportion. Okay, so think about this problem. Um, how do you find out the favorability of the current president? Like uh, you see in the news, like the popularity of uh, President Biden is something, something. You see them, right? And you kind of uh, wonder uh, how people got the result. I mean, nobody asked you, right? Yeah, uh, nobody asked you for your opinion of the current president. So how can they be sure that the popularity is that number, right? So let's see how they approach this, okay? All right, so the, the first approach is uh, select 1,000 random citizens, and you're going to ask, do you think the president is going, doing a good job? Okay, some will say yes, some will say no. And let's say that uh, the result is that 413 people said yes, and the rest said no. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you, you are now left with this number, and you have to make something out of this. So what kind of conclusion can you say? Well, first, 413 divided by 1,000 is 41.3% favorability. And uh, your question is, can you just say that uh, out of one, just 1,000 people, can you say that, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure 41.3% of entire population of the United States is, is uh, viewing the president favorably? Can you say that? Right? And uh, the answer is no. Uh, you have to provide something more, which is, uh, of course, it's not exactly 41.3%. That's just from a sample, right? So you better also publish the margin of error, okay? The margin of error. So you need to come up with the confidence interval. So uh, maybe I should add. Uh, yes. This this is not what we did in last lecture. In last lecture, we did confidence interval, but that was estimating the mean value of the population. Here, we're trying to estimate the the proportion of the population. Okay. Thank you for the question. The question was, uh, how is this different from what we did last lecture? Uh, we, we did in the last lecture estimating the confidence interval for the mean value. Here, we're trying to estimate the population proportion, or in other words, the, the percentage of the population, right? Okay. Um, so let me add here that uh, uh, what is the margin of error? Right. So that, that's really what the question is. All right, so let's think about this question. How do you approach it? Well, uh, before we begin this discussion, let's denote P for the actual proportion of the population that is favorable to the president, which is our goal. We really want to know the value P. Okay. But do we have the P? No, we don't. We only have an approximate value obtained from the sample. So let's denote P hat as the proportion from the sample. In our case, p hat was 0 0.413, which was 41.3%. Okay, so now what? Well, uh, notice that when we select 1,000 random people, and we, if we say that getting a yes is has the probability p, and getting a no is probably q, which is 1 minus p, that's repeating the same thing over and over again 1,000 times with some probability p. What, what, kind of, what kind of distribution is that? What is that called? What kind of distribution? Yes. Binomial? Yes, that is called a binomial distribution, right? So uh, we know that the number of people that are going to say yes, let's call that x, that x is going to follow the binomial distribution b and p. So uh, B and P means uh, your, your probability of success is P, and you're repeating this n times, where n is, in our case, it was 1,000. Now, we also recall that we learned that the x value 
has the mean of n times p, and the standard deviation is square root of n times p times q. And uh, we also learned that uh, the binomial distribution, if you increase the number n, the distribution starts to look more and more like a bell curve. We learned that, right? So it looks like a bell curve, and in fact, it converges to the normal distribution with mean value np and snare deviation square root of npq. That's what we learned. All right. Uh, so this is what we see initially, but then that's not our goal. We're trying to figure out what's happening to p hat, right? So think about the following. What is p hat? p hat is the number of yeses, that's x, divided by the number of people you ask, which is 1,000, right? So it, it, since 413 people said yes and n is 1,000, that's how we got the value p hat as 0 0.413, right? And, and therefore, uh, since we're not interested in x, but rather the proportion p hat, what we need to do is to divide this relation x follows n and p square root of n p q by n. So we're dividing both sides by n. See what I did? I just divide this by n. That means this has to be divided by n. This also has to be divided by n. And then if you simplify this, well, uh, hopefully you understood that x over n is p hat. And then n p divided by n, n n cancels and you just have p. And then when n goes inside the square root, it becomes n squared. And n over n squared just be, becomes n in the denominator. See how the n in the top just canceled away and you still have an n in the denominator? So that's just algebra. Uh, but this, this is what we see. OK. What's the n on top thing? Oh. Uh, n on the top uh, cancels. Uh, oh, this, this n. OK, yeah. It looked weird with the way the square root was over. Right, right. So what, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, this n here becomes square root of square root of n squared that one of the n cancels with this n and it still leaves the n down there that's what i'm trying to say all right okay all right then uh if you have a normal distribution, we learned in, in the last class how to get the confidence interval, right? The confidence interval was that uh, you have to do, well, we had the, the uh, x here, and the it was mu minus z alpha over 2 square root of something, and mu plus z alpha over 2 square, uh, the standard deviation. See, uh, in the last four, last class, the formula was that this, this should be the sigma, the standard deviation. But uh, since we, our standard deviation is the square root of P, PQ over N, and that's what I'm writing down. So that's what we have. And in addition to this, uh, you can also take this and uh, switch the P and Q, uh, switch the P hat and P. So uh, you can turn this into a to confidence interval for the population proportion p. So instead of having p hat here, you can put p here, and then p hat here, and p hat here. Uh, that that's similar to what we did in the last lecture, where we had the x. No, uh, we had the x bar, which is a sample mean, and the mu, which is the the population mean value. We uh, I showed you how to switch the two. And uh, the, the end result is the following. Uh, so this is, this is true in general, uh, which by the way is on your handout. Uh, suppose in a sample size of n, the proportion of a certain property is p hat because p hat is proportion, it should always be between 0 to 1. Then the actual proportion p of the population is between p hat plus minus e, where e is the margin of error, 
Uh, just a minute. Uh, margin of error, where this E is this formula here. And notice that instead of PQ, I have the P hat, Q hat. And that's, the, that's because uh, if we really did know P and Q, then we wouldn't have to do this. All, all we have is the P hat and Q hat, which are just the... Uh, approximate value of the actual P and Q, right? So what is the actual? The actual is P. The actual proportion that we want to know is P. And then P hat is our sample proportion. And Q hat would be just uh, 1 minus P hat. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, E is the margin of error. Okay. You have a question? No, I was, I was asking what, what was E, but you, like I was going to ask E, what you just said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. E is the margin of error, right? Okay. So that, that's the formula. You just apply this formula, uh, then you can come up with your conclusion. So uh, what's our conclusion then? Well, so uh, if you replace the p hat in the previous one as 0 0.413 and then compute the e as z off over to the critical value times square root of p, p hat q hat over 1000, which is the n value. Um, by the way, the, this 0 0.587 is just 1 minus 0 0.413. Okay, So that's what I did. And then... Uh, this z off over two, that's that's really what? Uh, in, it's, it's calculated by using inverse norm, right? Inverse norm of one minus 0 0.05 divided by two, right? And if you do that, that you, then you get 1.96 because the uh, confidence level is 95%, your significance, significance level or the alpha level is 5%. That's why I do 5 divided by 2, 0.05 divided by 2. And then you put that into the inverse norm using your calculator. You get 1.96. Well, and hopefully you remember how to do that. You just do a second vars, do the inverse norm. Or alternatively, you can use the, the chart. But if you do 0 0.05 divided by 2, and then you paste and you see that you get 1.9599, which runs to 1.960, right? So that, that's 1.96, that's the critical value. And if you calculate this entire thing using your calculator, you get E equal to 0 0.0305. And if I round it to the nearest 0.1%, this is 3.1%, right? This is 3.1%. And what's published would be like this. 41.3% uh, of the citizens of the United States view the president favorably with the margin of error, 3.1%. That's what, what you're going to see. Okay. So next time you see in the news, don't just take the, the number as face value. Now you're educated in statistics. What you're going to do is you're going to watch for that margin of error. Okay, if your margin of error says three point something, that's like uh, that means that they have surveyed about one thousand people. That's 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 what it means. Okay, now if you have ten thousand people, then that margin of error will be decreased even more. Yes. When did you get the 0.0305? Oh, I I just uh, plugged in. 1.96 times square root of 0 0.413 times 0 0.57 over 1,000. Well, let's do it. So it's like uh, 1.96 times uh, the square root. No, not that. Uh, let's do it again. Okay, 1.96 times 
second square root of um, parenthesis uh, point four one three times point five eight seven divided by one thousand close the parenthesis enter ah. I don't know what happened. 1.96 times second square root 0.413 times 0.587 divided by 1000. Yeah, so you get this, okay? All right, so uh, about 1,000 people translates to about 3.1% margin of error. Uh, of course, this value slightly changes depending on the p hat. Uh, if your p hat is very small or very large, close to 99% or close to 1%, then your margin of error could be even bigger. Is it? Uh, no, even smaller. Yeah, it's even smaller, right? Okay. All right, so let's do another example. Oh, but before I do it, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, when you see in the news that the favorability of the president is, interpreting, 41.3% uh, plus minus 3.1%, what does this mean? Can anyone of you explain? I mean, uh, you, you, Yes. There's a margin of error of 3.1% on um, your probability. So it could range anywhere between 3.1% margin of error compared to 41.3. Right, right. So uh, now, now what is not clearly explained is in most cases, they don't say 95% confidence, but it's usually the industry standard. Okay. So with 95% confidence, with probability 95%, your president's favorability is at least 38.2% and at most 44.4%. That's what it means, okay? Yeah. Now, if you just see this, like, oh, uh, it could be anywhere from 38.2% to 44.4%. It seems like it has a, a lot of wiggle room, right? You don't feel like that's a, that's a pretty good, good answer. But uh, if you want to be 95% sure, uh, that's the best you can do. And if you want to be 99% sure, then this, this will what? Will, will, the, will the confidence interval increase or decrease? Would, it, would the confidence interval become larger when you increase the confidence level or would it become narrower? Wider or narrower if you increase the confidence level? Okay, let me ask the question again. If you increase the confidence level to 99%, would your confidence interval become wider or narrower? No, it, become, it becomes wider. Yeah. Why? Because you want to be 99% confident. So there's like, when you say you're 95% co confident, that means there's 5% chance that it, the actual, ve actual favorability could be outside this region, right? If you increase your per, uh, confidence level to 99%, then it's including more possibilities, that extra 4%. So, so this interval increases. Does that make sense? All right. So think about that. Uh, yes. So what's the difference between confidence and confidence interval? Uh, so this interval means it's some number to another number, right? Yes. And 95% confidence means that uh, if you had to repeat this 100 times, 
if you had similar kind of result 100 times, then 95% you'll be right in saying that the actual value is between these two numbers. Yeah. yeah. But to be 99% right, you have to increase your net. Okay. You have to uh, throw a wider net in order to contain 99%. That's what's happening. Okay, uh, let's do this next question. A survey of 3,248 adults revealed that 65% of them have a Facebook account. Find the 95% confidence interval. All right. So here, we already have done this uh, Z off over two as 1.96 as before, right? I showed you how to do it in the calculator. And then we are given that 65% said, yes, I have a Facebook account. How many of you have a Facebook account? Not many, okay. So yeah, Med Med Medha's uh, stock prices are going down. So something to do with it, all right. But I guess this survey was done like uh, 10 years ago when Facebook was for everyone, uh, even kids, yeah. All right, uh, so let's say 65% of people said, yes, I have a Facebook account, and 35% said, nah, I don't have one. And then what you can do is you can calculate the margin of error using the formula that I showed you before, the critical value times square root of P times Q over N. And the margin of error comes out as 0 0.0164, which is 1.64%. Then, uh, you can take the sample proportion and add and subtract the margin of error to uh, conclude that the actual proportion of people that have a Facebook account is somewhere between 63.36% to 66.64%. Okay, So how do you write this as, a, as an answer? Well, uh, you can either write it as 65.0% plus or minus 1.64% for the margin, uh, the, the confidence interval. Or you can also write uh, the actual calculation, which is 63.36 to 66.64%. Okay, so that kind of now gives you a clear idea of what to do, right? If you have a question where you're presented with the sample size, and the sample proportion. Sometimes they might not give you this, the 65%, the but rather uh, they would say about 2,000 some people said they have it. In that case, you have to divide the two numbers to get the population proportion, right? We're going to do, do an example like that later. Right? Okay, let's try the next question. Oh, no, uh, oh. Uh, this next type of question is uh, number of samples required to estimate the population proportion to a desired accuracy. Uh, now, in the last lecture, I showed you that if you're given the margin of error and you want to you wanted to know the sample size, you just solve the margin of formula margin of error formula for n. And you get some formula, right? I showed you how to do the algebra. You can ask the same type of question here as well. Uh, if you want, if you have some target margin of error, then you can solve this relationship for this given n, the sample size, and you can end up with this. Okay. Um, Yeah, and that's just algebra. You can just square both sides. Uh, again, first divide by the critical value, square both sides, flip both sides, and doing the algebra, you'll 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 get this. Now the problem with this formula, however, is that often you have to decide the sample size before you before you actually do the survey. Uh, 
And here's what a lot of uh, surveying companies do. So po the polling companies, uh, accuracy is their goal. They, they need to spend money to get good samples, right? Uh, sometimes they have to uh, pay people directly or they might say, oh, uh, like 10, uh, 10 people will get a $500 gift card or something to get, get people to respond to surveys because a lot of people, they don't respond to surveys, right? Uh, you can even earn money just by taking surveys. Did you know that? Like, I forgot what website was, but you can go to a website and just uh, answer surveys and they give you money, although it's kind of small. But it's it's all money, like getting a lot of sample size, that's money. So uh, if, if a news outlet says, okay, uh, give me the president's current polling numbers. And the polling company would ask, okay, well, we can give it to you, but how much accuracy are you looking for? What's the margin of error you're looking for? And they, they might return and say, eh, I would like to have some margin of error some in the around like 2%, okay? Then you have to decide how many sample sizes to, to use because then you have to give, the, give them a quote. Okay? You have to tell the news outlet, okay, to get that data, you have to give us $10,000 or $20,000, whatever, okay? Uh, and, and then they might give it to you or not, right? If the price is reasonable, but you don't want to, to tell them of too, too small of a number that uh, they're not gonna pay you. So you, uh, no, uh, you, don't give to, you don't want to give them a too small of a number that uh, you end up losing money. So you really need to do an estimate of this, okay? Uh, but the problem is often before you do the survey, you don't know the value of the sample proportion. And if you don't know P hat, then you can't know Q hat because they add to one, right? So what do you do in that case? Well, in that case, you just go with half, 0.5, okay? And that kind of uh, gives you an overestimate, okay? Uh, unless... Uh, your p hat and q hat really turns out to be 50 and 50. Uh, this value will be an overestimate, but uh, it, it kind of guarantees that you're going to get the result you want, okay? All right, so this is the formula that you're going to use when you don't have an idea of where p hat and q hat is. But uh, another thing that the company can do is they can use a p hat and q hat of a previous survey that's similar. So if you're, New Solid is asking you for the uh, February polling numbers and your January polling numbers are somewhere like 35%, then you can use 0.35 to have an idea of how many sample size you would want. Okay, yes. Huh? No, no, I'm saying if the news company says, I need 2% margin of error, Give me the president's polling numbers, right? And uh, you need to estimate the sample size to give the news company a quote. Then uh, you don't know what P hat and Q hat is before the survey, right? But let's say you have a January survey that says 35% favorability, okay? In that case, you can use the P hat and Q hat as 0.35 and 0.65. But how are you getting this number? Oh, oh. Uh, however, if you don't have that number, if it's your first time doing it, then what you do is uh, you, you put P hat as 0.5 and Q hat would also be 0.5, right? And the question is, why do you get 0.25? Well, that's 0.5 times 0.5, right? What's 0.5 times 0.5? 0.25, right? Point five times point five is point two five. Okay, so that's that's why you get this number here as p hat times q hat. Okay. So you use this if you have no idea where p hat and q hat could be, 
and you use this one if you know PL and QL. All right, so let me show you an example where we use this. Uh, so example, how many samples are required to take the width of a 90% confidence interval for a population proportion estimate to be less or equal to 0 0.02? So let's think about this question. First of all, uh, the critical value for 90% confidence level is inverse norm of 1 minus 0.1 divided by 2. And if you put that into the calculator, you're going to get 1.645. Second, since the uh, width of the confidence interval for a given margin of error is 2e, do you understand that? What's the width, width of an interval? It's the maximum value minus the minimum value, right? So if you do e minus negative e, you get 2e. And you're, uh, for 2e to equal to 0 0.02, e must be 0 0.01. So in other words, your target margin of error is 1%. Okay. The question is, if you have a goal of reaching 1% margin of error with 90% confidence, how many sample size should you acquire? That's the question. Now you use the formula, like this one, right? And then uh, it's simply the second formula. We're using 0 0.25 because we don't know what p hat and q hat could be, okay? And that's not given in the question. So you have no choice but to use this one, where p hat and q hat are determined to be, or, or assumed, assumed to be 0 0.5. So uh, if you put everything in, uh, into the formula, this is the value you get. And whatever number you get, you should always round up. I explained why last time, right? Because you can't, for samples, you can't get like decimal samples. Uh, sample sizes are always integers. Therefore, you have to round up. So the answer is, the companies to acquire 6,766 samples. And uh, that's quite a lot of money that they have to spend. I, I don't know what kind of sample it is, but depending on the kind of samples, they may have to uh, spend thousands of dollars. Uh, 